Almighty God, without you we are not able to please you. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Listen to what the Lord says. Stand up, plead my case before the mountains. Let the hills hear what you have to say. Hear, you mountains, the Lord's accusation. Listen, you everlasting foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a case against his people. He is lodging a charge against Israel. My people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me. I brought you up out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you, also Aaron and Miriam. My people remember what Balak king of Moab plotted and what Balaam son of Beor answered. Remember your journey from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with 10,000 rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruits of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Hello, and welcome to this service for the fourth Sunday in Lent, which is also Mothering Sunday. And we're continuing our theme of a Methodist way of life and the title for this week is Service. One of my father's favourite television programme series was Crown Court. It ran between 1972 and 1984. There would be three half hour programmes shown on consecutive days with the story and the action confined to a courtroom. Have you ever attended court for any reason? What impact did that have on you? Crown Court took a familiar pattern of presenting the case for the prosecution, the case for the defence, and then a jury, and they were all members of the public, had to arrive at a verdict. There's a similar structure in the reading from Micah. In verses 1 to 5, the prophet, as barrister, presents God's claim that his love and generosity towards Israel has been ignored, and the mountains, strong and enduring, are called as witnesses. In verses 6 and 7, God's people plead ignorance as their defence. Should they have offered more sacrifices? Should they have offered that and better sacrifices? God's case against them is that they offered everything except what he longed for. Do we recognise ourselves at all? In this description. Before I came to Rustington, I was at the minister at Trinity Methodist Church in Woking. The text of Micah 6 8, the last verse in our reading, where the prophet becomes the judge and says, God has told you, you know, what is good. Those words were and still inscribed on two banners that hang at the front of that church. At every service, they posed the questions. Have you heard what God has said? Will you choose to live in that way? Asking how we should live is at the core of a Methodist way of life. And in Micah 6, 8, that way is described as justice, kindness, and a humble way of life with regard to both our neighbour and God himself. How do we reflect on those values on Mothering Sunday. 
How do we think about combating sexism and not just offering sentiment? In this way of life, we're not to be narrowly defined by the religious, but by rather how we engage with every aspect of our life and the global community in which God has placed us. That's a huge challenge. Is it the case that Jesus offers us a model of what that means and how we should live? Amen.